Perseverance is the key to success in the stock market, just as it is the key to success in life. Without it, even the most brilliant trading strategy will fail. Napoleon Hill. And again, Mr. Hill is exactly correct in this quote, as he is in so many others. The architect of the brilliant multi, multi-million dollar still sells in the thousands per year. Think and grow rich, along with many other things. The history of Napoleon Hill, so fascinating. Andrew Carnegie, the industrialist, the steel magnate who built all these libraries all across, gave so much of his money away there at the end of his life. A Scottish immigrant to the United States, he was fascinated by success and who was successful and who wasn't. And he hired Napoleon Hill to go out and study for decades and put a book together as to what success was all about, what the mindset was, what the work ethic was, and he did that. And it is fascinating to this day. And of course, he falls back over and over again on one word, perseverance. My friends, if you will just stick with it, you will figure this out. And as Napoleon Hill tells us, without persistence, even the most brilliant trading strategy will fail. That is for sure. Let's jump into these charts. Everything up for the day as we go into Christmas with the Santa rally just keeps on a going. Of course, our jumping in point here in this first or even the second week was just a little bit higher that second week. We had that strong green candle who started all this either the first week on the 30th of October beginning then or the next week, the 6th of November. And man, continues to move up. Last week, the high was 473.73. This week, 474.92. We're continuing to move up. Now the volume, not a lot of volume compared to what we saw last week, two days into this. Maybe we're, I don't think we're two thirds, just to the, just to the average, we, or two fifths rather. We'll keep an eye on things and see how it continues to go. But regardless, moving up well above the weekly trend line on the two day and the half day. Looking nice, friends. We look at the NASDAQ 100, and of course, we see just about the same thing. However, when we look at the NASDAQ, well, let's look. We're 409.28 is the high this week. Last week, 406.54, even nicer. And again, we can see the two-day chart pulling away from the weekly trend line. Same with the half day. Let's look at where we are on 20-year bonds. Last week, look at all that crazy high volume. And again, volume this week, really slow. Oh, and the volume this week too. Again, better on the NASDAQ uh, than the S&P and 20-year U.S. government bonds. But as we look, the high last week was 99.35. This week, 99.26. So we're, what, nine cents off so far this week, we'll continue to keep an eye on things, moving in the right direction, well above on the half day and the two day when it comes to the weekly trend line. But we can again see where bonds have sort of been topping here for a few days. We're just sliding along sideways. We'll keep an eye on that. But for the day up, 0.54%. <clears throat> now remember, as the week moves along, <clears throat> the big boys out there in the market will be going on vacation. If they're not already on vacation, they leave the caretakers, guys to manage things and not screw it up. And of course, one reason you're seeing this decreased volume very well be that most of the big traders are off. They're taking <coughs> their Christmas holiday with their families. So we'll continue to wait, watch and see, even with low volume, things are moving in the right direction. Now look at gold. I went back in time and found where gold peaked before and put this purple line in for you. You can see where gold moved a little above that back on the week beginning the 27th of November and dropped back down. And this week, moving up a little bit, we don't have any down shadow or wick as we call it. So, but a little green, you know, again, a little green candle, not a lot of volume. Uh, we can see the volume on the two-day just continuing to decrease. And again, we do have at least a ceiling up here somewhere where things have bounced off before. 
check this out as I really crank it back for you and let you see where gold hit a high back in August of 2020. You can see that again, the high there in that week of weeks, it was up to 194.45. This week, 193.30, that is it on the week beginning March the 7th, 2022. We see where things went up here, uh, 191.36. Now again, that was 193, 192, 191. Just a couple of weeks ago, 192. So again, for gold to go a whole lot higher, can it? Well, of course it can. Will it? I don't know about that. So we're keeping an eye on things. We already, we already saw it punch through our weekly trend line here with a spinning top, with a good bit of volume. And of course, look at all the highest volume we've seen lately is where it topped and then fell off that. Not a lot of volume this week. So maybe gold's just trying to hold it till we get into the new year. We'll wait, we'll watch, we'll see. We're not pulling any trigger at this point. That's where we are on gold below the trend line, weekly trend line on both the two day and the half day sideways slide, getting a little bit of energy over the last day. So we'll see where things go. What about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin, as far as our previously drawn trend line, we're still holding a little above it. Weak candle, weak volume. We can see this two day volume, super, super weak. We can see on the half day chart, super weak volume as it's just sort of popping around, not doing much. Up for the day, 1.23%, but the high of 41.05 back on the week beginning the 4th of December, then it was 40. This week, the high, 39.79. Now, what have we seen Bitcoin typically do? Pop up, fall down. Pop up, fall down. Pop up, fall down. Now, that goes all the way back to the beginning of the year. Remember when Bitcoin was in these doldrums down around the 1659 mark up to a high, as we said, of 4105 from 16 something to 41 something. That's unbelievable. Now, again, this is the bit, this is not the 24 hour day Bitcoin. This is the Bitcoin ETF. This is the thing you can trade like a stock. So, something potentially for you to practice. You don't have to take the danger in your practice trade of being on a Bitcoin exchange like, I don't know, FTX or some crazy thing like that. Again, that's what I like about tracking this for you. It, it moves a little differently, but not substantially. And again, gives us something to practice trade. You know, and when you start thinking you're getting good at it, you know, you could buy three shares for just under $100. And then guess what? You could do a little fractional trading. Hey, if you lose 20%, it's 20 bucks and you get to do real buying and selling. So again, we talk about fractional trading. I'll probably put that as the training tomorrow uh, and end for our subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, go to chartingwealth.com, sign up for free. That list is never spam, never shared. And you'll get our daily reviews emailed to you each and every day. And you'll get the trainings you wouldn't otherwise get for free. Not Patreon membership, just the little freebie we give for our patron, for our subscribers at chartingwealth.com. Now, that is where we are, folks. We'll continue to track Watch Bitcoin, of course, along with the S&P 500 moving up nicely, the NASDAQ 100 moving up nicely. 20-year bonds, again, continuing on the move up. Gold, we're holding tight on that to see which way that's going to go. And Bitcoin, struggling. That's where we are. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.